Hi, and welcome. In this video, we are going to go through how to plot functions using ticks. So this is the final image we are going to create. And as always, we are going to start by a completely blank canvas and try to build this picture. Okay, so let's start by deleting everything here. And let me also delete this optional argument like this and compile. And always remember that up here in the preamble, we have installed our ticks package. So let's start creating our picture. So first of all, I'm going to go through how to create the X and the Y axis in Tix. So this should all be very familiar. First of all, I need to draw the lines. So let's start with the X axis. I'm going to start drawing from minus zero comma one. And I want to draw until 10 comma zero. And the Y axis is going to be from zero comma zero dot one to zero comma five, like this with a minus here. So here we have our X axis and here is our Y axis. So when we draw axis, I like to have an arrowhead in each of the axes, so here and here. So the way to do this is with an optional argument like this. So now we have a small arrow here and we can change the direction of the arrow by just letting it point in the other direction like this. So let's compile and let me also zoom in here. So now we see that we have a small arrow head here and if we want both of them, so let me zoom out. So both here and here, we can have both the directions like this and compile. So now we have an arrow head here and one here. Okay, but let me go back to deleting this one and let me also add one here. And now we have our X and Y axis. The next thing I want to do is to add a grid in our figure here. To do this, we will first of all use the draw command and then we will use the grid in the same way as we did with the rectangle. So first of all, we need to have the lower left corner of our grid, which I'm going to set to minus zero comma one to minus zero comma one, like this. And then I'm going to write grid. And then I'm going to write the upper right corner, which I'm going to set to 10 comma five. And let me compile. So first of all, I don't like when the grid has this auto line here. So let me remove it by having nine comma nine and four comma nine and compile. So second of all, the grid is way too prevalent. I will make it weaker by saying that I want it gray and I want it ultra thin and compile. And now we have our grid. So this was how to create the X and the Y axis. So let's go towards plotting. To plot a function, we will begin by the draw command and then we will use the plot. And inside this parentheses here, I'm going to write the X and the corresponding Y. So let's say that we want to plot the function X divided by two. So the X coordinate is going to be X, which I'm going to denote by backslash X in this case. And the corresponding Y coordinate for each X is going to be X. And then I need to divide this X by two, which I'm going to do with the divide symbol and then two. So let us try to compile. And now you see that we get a line here, but it's not really fitting inside our coordinate system. And the reason for this is that we did not specify the domain of the function. So we did not specify which X values can this function take in. To do this, we will use the domain optional argument and we want you to take in values from zero to 9.9 .9 or something. So zero, two, which is going to be a colon, 9.9. .9. And let us now compile. And now we see that our graph is inside our coordinate system and it is plotted from zero to 9.9. .9. At the current point, I think that our function looks a bit boring. So I'm going to add colors. So I want it to be orange and I want it to be thick. And let me compile again. And now my line here is much more prevalent. So let me make another function. Again, I'm going to use the draw command and then plot. 
and let us make the function x squared divided by 25 plus 1. So the x is going to be x, so this is the x coordinate, and then x squared is the same as x times x, and then we divide by 25, and then we plus 1. So let us try to compile again. And then we have this one. Again, we need to specify the domain. 0 to 9.9, .9. we just take the same domain. And this is our function. And I would prefer it to be another color. So let's take blue and let's make it thick. And now we have our other function, x squared divided by 25 plus 1. OK, before we go on to the final function, I want to say that if you have the same domain on all your functions, it's quite a lot of text to write. So instead of writing the domain over and over again, you can write it once up here with an optional argument in the ticks picture. So let me write domain equal and then the domain, which is 0 to 9.9. .9. And then I can delete this thing here and then this thing here and compile. And you see that exactly the same thing happens. And if I want the third function now, I do not need to specify the domain. OK, so the third function is going to be x squared divided by 25. So let me write draw and then plot again. And this time, instead of writing x times x, let me write x to the power of 2. So my x coordinate is going to be a backslash x. And my y coordinate is going to be x to the power of 2. And to take the power, we would use the power command. And it's going to take x. And it's going to take x to the power of 2, like this. And we are going to divide by 25. Now, if we would try to compile now, we will run into a problem. So let me just do that. And now you see that we have an error here and you get a bunch of numbers. The reason for this is that this parentheses here end with this parentheses. To not make this happen, we will use curly braces and just take them around my function here. So if we now compile, then we have our plotted function. So let me again make it another color, let's say red and thick. OK, so now we have all our free function. So the final thing is to label the functions. To do this, we can find the coordinates of each of these points here and use the node command, as we learned in the previous section. But instead, let us do it a um, simpler way. We're just including node inside here. And then inside the curly braces, we can have our text. So my first function, I'm going to call f of x. And it's going to be x divided by 2. So let me now compile. And then you have the label x divided by 2 here. But you see that it places it exactly at the point. So again, we will use the above optional argument here and compile to place it slightly above. So let us do it for the second function with node. And let me place it right. And this function is going to be called g of x. And it's going to be equal x multiplied by x divided by 25 plus 1. And let us compile. So here we have our function. And our final function is going to be, and I want to place it right again. And I'm going to call it h of x. And it's equal to x squared divided by 25. This is our final picture. I hope you enjoyed this video. So in the next video, we are going to do a short exercise. So stay tuned.